I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, are we gonna do it again? And gosh dang it, yes, we're doing it again, right now. Welcome back to the only YouTube channel where you come for the music production tutorials and gear reviews, but you stay for the stellar personality and great looks. <laughs> Have you ever looked at Nicky Romero's Kickstart or X for Records LFO tool and thought, man, that plugin's awesome? But then you also look at your wallet and you realize, man, I'm broke. Because the way that my bank account is set up, the thing is, I got a check in the savings, but all my money is in the savings. I don't think my card is gonna go through. That's why I come in, baby. DRC has got your back. Today we're gonna be talking about a sidechain compression tool that I made completely free. If you leave a comment below, I'll send it to you and the different uses that I have for it. We're locked and loaded, ready to drop another bomb. Come with me for the ride and let's start the engine right now. Let's go. What's up guys, it's DRC coming at you with another video. Smiling from ear to ear today because just from last week's video, we got 20 new subscribers. That's right, 20 new subscribers. I'm talking 300 subs. That's a lot for me. I just wanna clap for y'all. I just wanna, I just wanna clap for y'all. You the real MVP, you the real MVP, you know? That's, 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 that's what's real. <laughs> so I'm gonna keep this channel going. Please be sure to hit the like button. Please be sure to comment. Please subscribe, it'll help out the algorithm. And without further ado, let's get into the video. All right, so if you're on this channel, I'm pretty sure you already know what sidechain compression is. It's usually when you link a melody or a bass or something like that to a percussive element like a kick drum or uh, sidechaining things from one track to another to duck the volume of one track uh, relative to another track. Uh, I'm not gonna get into the details of that. There's probably a million videos on YouTube about sidechain compression. What I'm gonna talk about here is a um, technique that I use to mimic the uh, sidechain compression tools that I know of. So such as Extra Records LFO tool and Kickstart. I know they have a couple more features, but whenever I see them used by popular producers, they're basically using them as a sidechain compression tool. And I thought Ableton Live has these uh, modulation tools stock, so why not take five to 10 minutes to make a device that can mimic what these tools are mainly used for? So we're gonna get into that now. All right guys, so now I'm gonna get into how Sidekicker was made. What Sidekicker is, is a shaper device linked to a utility. Um, these are both devices that you will have if you have Ableton Live 10 Suite Edition because Shaper is from the Max for Live devices that comes with the Ableton Live 10 Suite Edition. Uh, it comes stock. Basically what Shaper is, is a device that you draw in a curve and it turns any knob in that specific way. So how I used it was I clicked map on the shaper device and then I linked it to a gain on a utility on that track. Um, so basically that's gonna be turning the knob in the way that I draw on the shaper device. So after I mapped the gain to the shaper, I started increasing the depth of the effect. And what I started realizing was that it was going above and below zero db so it gets way louder and way quieter and what i wanted to happen was it to just keep decreasing in volume and going back to zero db because i don't want to be raising the volume of any track especially if i'm mixing and, and making a song it'll definitely overpower the track because it's going to be going louder and quieter than any other track so you wanted to have more of a side chain effect so um once i realized that i had to essentially um link the shaper and the utility by holding down the shift key and clicking both of the devices, then hitting command G on your Mac or control G on your Windows device, and that groups them into an audio effect rack. The next thing that I did was I opened up the macro knobs and I mapped them to two things. So I created an amount knob and you're gonna be linking the depth to the macro one And then you're also gonna be linking the offset, offset to macro one. Now, hear me out on this. What you need to do now is you want the depth to start increasing when you turn the knob because that increases the depth of the effect, right? So you're gonna leave that from zero to 100. But you want the offset to start going lower and lower so it doesn't go above zero dB as you turn the knob up. So. On the offset, you go from zero to negative 100%. And then what that does is as you turn up the knob,
now you notice how it's not going above zero dB. It's because as you're increasing the depth, you're lowering the offset. So it starts bouncing up, but it keeps only going to zero dB, and the base is the only thing that starts going lower. So your, your side chain is gonna increase in effect as you turn up the amount knob. It's basically a dry wet knob for the side chain. The next thing that I did just to, to play around was I mapped the second knob to the rate of uh, the shaper. So this way, if you want, you can make it more of like an effect where it's choppy or something like that. I'm just gonna, gonna show you. I rarely use that, but I figured it's just something to do to put on a knob and mess with the rates. I really only just use this for a sidechain compression, so I usually leave it to a quarter note beat for most of my dance music tracks. Another thing with Shaper that you can do to edit the curve, um, you can draw in any kind of curve you want, like double clicking on the line and making any other node and then moving that around. But um, something that's important to note is a lot of these sidechain compression uh, VSTs, they allow you to make exponential curves on the lines. The way to do that with Shaper is just how you make any curve in an automation in Ableton Live 10. You hold down the Option key on your Mac or Alt key on your Windows device and you click the line that you want to make curved. So in this situation, I'm gonna click this line right here and while holding down the Option key and dra clicking and dragging down and that makes the curve exponential and clicking and dragging it up makes it a little more curved on the higher end. This allows you to get that more pumping effect and exponential curve usually does that. Um, and then you can also edit the tail of the sidechain compression. So if you don't want it to click as much, you can bring this node in or out. So you can really edit the shape of the sidechain just like you would with LFO tool or kickstart. So yeah, super easy to map, super easy to use. And I'm gonna get into how I use it. So here we go. So I'm gonna show you guys um, a song I made just like for my live stream promo. Um, and it goes like this. This is without the side kicker. You get the gist of the song. What I did was add three of these side kickers because you can, when you're listening to the beat, <clears throat> the kick doesn't really hit that hard. Like it hits, but I feel like the bass and the melody and the chords, all that, all the synths and everything, they clash so much with it. And in EDM, you need the kick to hit hard. Like that defines a song. If you don't feel that hit, it's over, you know? What I did was I added three of these side kickers. So if I turn these on, this is what it's gonna sound like with the side kickers. It's a very subtle difference, but like if you're a producer, you would know that a kick's hitting a little bit harder. You know, you got, you, it's, it's attention to detail. So listen very, very closely. So that was uh, the, with the side kickers on and it, it ducks the bass, it ducks the melodies just slightly. Basically, if it's a four to the floor song, it's gonna be hitting every time the kick drum hits. Um, and then you can kinda click and drag and edit where, like, where the volume automation goes. And I know it's not MIDI triggered and I know LFO Tool and Kickstart do it with uh, MIDI triggering, but this is free 99, baby. Just use this, it's zero dollars. If you got a, a four to the floor beat on EDM, you could use this, you know? I mean, another alternative is just drawing in on an automation the curve that you want and then copying and pasting it every time a kick hits. Um, so VSTs really do save you some time, but you can use this and then just load it up on, on whatever instrument you want to duck if you're doing EDM and it ducks it for the kick and it makes it way easier, saves you some time. You know, you don't gotta do the routing for the sidechain compression. You just can draw whatever you want on the shaper and you can increase the amount or increase the rate. So I sold this without the kick, right? So you're gonna hear the ducking now. So to have a listen.
So it's hitting every quarter beat. And um, you can tell that the volume knob on the utility or the gain knob on the utility is just being ducked 100% every time it hits a quarter note. So you're gonna get this ducking sensation like it was uh, sidechain compressed. So I'll play without it. And I'm gonna slowly increase it and you hear the ducking. You can actually mess with the curve and make it like heavily side-chained. Um, so you can hear this right now. And you hear how big of a difference that makes just from clicking and dragging that one point on Shaper. You can edit the shape of your sidechain and have more control over it as opposed to messing with knobs on a sidechain compressor. Um, I think it's a much cleaner way to sidechain things. So yeah, that's, that's basically the tool that I made. And one of the ways is sidechain compression. But what's cool about Sidekicker is that I know LFO tool, you can route it to like a filter or whatever, but with Sidekicker, you can literally map this thing to eight different sources. So you can technically control a filter, volume, FM knob on a synthesizer, a resonance knob, delays. Like you can map this to anything on Ableton, like anything at all, which is really cool. And I'm not sure if that's actually um, something that those other two VSTs can do. If they can, then drop a comment below, let me know that. But I didn't even buy those things because I did this myself. And also, if you look here on the mapping, you can actually map it inversely. So let's say I have the volume ducking on the utility. So it's basically acting like a sidechain compressor. I can map this to an auto filter and I can map this to the frequency of the auto filter. Boom. And see how it's ducking in the same way as the volume knob is? But what I can do is I can drop the 100 to zero and drop the zero to 100. And it flips the entire situation, you know? Um, and then I can actually increase the resonance and let's see what that sounds like. See, so it has like a slightly squelchier tail to it um, that you can really um, do some interesting things with just mapping it to different knobs and like it's basically having a, a person there just turning the knob and like it makes things a little more interesting to the ear. So I, I thought it was a, a great and simple way to modulate anything. All right guys, so another cool use of this device is if you have a synth group that has a lot of bassy synths and high frequency synths, you can actually uh, open up an EQ3 and then map the gain low, gain mid, and gain high onto the side kicker and you can adjust the percentages on this mapping over here on the shaper. And as you can see, the lows are ducking way more, the uh, mids are ducking way less, and the highs are ducking even less than that. So you can still have some high-end uh, frequencies coming through when the kick hits. This way the bass doesn't clash, but also the synths can ring through in the mix. Um, so I thought this was a very good use of it. Every time I see you, baby, come a little closer While I can't be near you, you make me feel something Every time I see you, baby, come a little closer Come a little closer So as you can see, the bass on the synth is still ducking, but it's allowing a lot more of the high frequencies to ring through in the song, so it keeps the mix full, even when the kick's coming through. So it's a cool tool. You can just modulate and change little things here and there. So simple. And you can even use this for buildups into a part of a song. So like if you have like a riser or a crash and you wanna like mess with the rate of an auto filter while it's leading into a new, new part, like you can do that way simpler this way, where you can just map it to a shaper. And this is not just for EDM, it can also be used for trap and any other creative way that you wanna use it. I just put together a loop for trap. Uh, it goes like this. <laughs> I 
I basically just did a simple melody, put some halftime on it, OTT, limited it, did a lot of sound design stuff. Um, if you wanna check that out, just uh, be sure to check out my live stream when I work on a beat. Yeah, so that's what it sounds like without Sidekicker. I feel like there's not enough width to it, so I actually went to my sends and returns and I mapped my shaper within the Sidekicker to the, the reverb send on that track. Kind of complicated, but what I did was instead of it automating the gain on that utility that's within that plugin, I just mapped the send knob on my melody. So I kept turning it up and down rhythmically. What that does is it only allows a little part of the melody to be pumped into a bunch of effects. And if you use it on reverbs and delays, it pumps in only a section of that melody into those reverbs and delays, and it you can only hear those tails. So it kind of gives like a pumping vibe type feel, and it adds atmosphere around the melody that you have. You're gonna listen to it without the side kicker on. <laughs> And after some limiting and EQing and OTTs and reverbs and echoes, and it still doesn't feel vibey enough for me, so to add more rhythm, I actually put another side kicker on that main melody, not on the send, but on the melody. So I'm gonna turn that on right now and you're gonna hear the pumping effect that that has on the melody itself. It also gives you a little bit more of a groove to nod to, even in the melody, so. If you want something to be more rhythmic, you can just throw this on, mess with the rate and the amount, and you can have that, that kind of pumping feel. And it's pretty easy to do, it's pretty easy to make and then save it and then use it on most of your tracks or just at least try it out and see if it sounds good. All right guys, that's it for today. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button below. Also, if you have any other tips and tricks on how you would use this Sidekicker device, make sure you leave a comment below. If you like this video and wanna see more, please hit the subscribe button here and I'll also link you to another video here. This is DRC signing out and reminding you, keep doing what you love. I'm out.